let me just get started and jump right into this thing. You know, <clears throat> I I was speaking to my man because y'all know I do the podcast and I try to interview um, as many people who have the same heart and the same spirit and the same intention as we do. People who are either out there grinding, they achieved high level success, they're really doing their thing, but they want to give back and they want to share with the world. So my man, he put me in contact with this dude who's a professional football player. Now, I don't know a thing. And I mean, I don't know one thing about football. So when I call homeboy up, homeboy pick up the phone. He was gracious. And I'm just talking to him. And we having small talk because I'm prepping for a future um interview with him. So I'm talking to him and I'm starting to learn a little more about him. And then I started to feel <laughs> dumb because... It come to find out he's been in the NFL for years. This is a Super Bowl champion. I'm like, yo, where the hell I been? Like, I, like I and I had to apologize to him because I'm like, yo, I I just don't know about football. So I'm sure you the man out there in the world, and I'm gonna share your story with the rest of my movers. But apologize or I apologize for my ignorance because I just don't know. So then, as we keep on talking. You know, I go into my whole spiel and I start to tell him a little bit about me and he cut me off mid sentence. And he was just like, yo, just let me know when you want to do the interview. We good. And I was like, yo, you don't want to know nothing about me. He was like, yo, my man, I've been knowing him for 25, 30 years. He vetted you. If he gave you my direct number, you good. Like your name is good with me. Just let me know what you want to do when you want to do it, and I'm going to treat you like I treat him. If you family to him, then you family to me. And it got me thinking because he was off the rip, like, yo, your name is good. I'm rocking with you. Tell me what you want to do. So I started to think about one of my favorite shows of all time, The Wire. And in The Wire, it's this scene with, my favorite character, Marlo Stansfield. And for any of y'all who ain't watched The Wire, go watch The Wire. But Marlo, he came into that drug game in Baltimore with a whole different set of rules. Like, he was on some real Pablo Escobar. You can take the silver or you can get the lead. Like, he didn't come in following the same code as all the drug dealers before him. He was like, either you going to get down or you going to lay down, but this town is mine. And it's this one scene in particular that I love. And it's when him and his whole crew got bagged. And they sitting in the bullpen and they got their paperwork out. And they reading through the paperwork and they going through a laundry list of charges. They trying to figure out if somebody's snitching. And the scene is crazy because they trying to, like, who could possibly be snitching? Not knowing the cops got them on the wire. But in that scene, one of his main enforcers, a stone killer, said, yo, you know what? Maybe it's the young boy Mike who been snitching because we all arrested and he's not. So they start looking around the room. He's like, yo, I don't see Mike snitching. Why would you even say that? And he was like, yo, because he been running around town, popping off at the mouth, talking about Omar, who's the local stick-up kid, been calling you out by name, and you ain't did nothing about it. And then the whole scene changed. Like, everything in the scene just completely changed. They in the bullpen it's noisy. It's a bunch of stuff going on around them. And instantly, it got tense. And Marlo was like, huh? What? Omar said, what about me? And his man, who is a straight up shooter, trigger man, looked at Marlo and said, yo, Omar ain't been saying nothing. I didn't want to put this on your brain. 
because you already had too much to think about. Marlo turned around like, yo, how the F you know what I need on my brain and what I need to be thinking about? You telling me Omar calling me out by name? When we bounce up out of here, I want all y'all to go down to them corners and let everybody in Baltimore know word ain't never get back to me. Marlo Stansfield, he ain't scared of nobody. I go up against Omar, Avon Barksdale, or anybody in this city because my name is my name. And there wasn't a chance in hell that any of them in that bullpen was walking out of there anytime soon. Now, this is a guy who owned Baltimore. If you were hustling in Baltimore and you selling them things out there, you got his package. This man is rich, the town fed him, but he didn't care about none of that. Even at the top level, he got the crown already. It was all about his name. And that's what I'm saying to y'all movers. When somebody speaks your name, your name, what are they saying about it? How much weight do your name carry in the streets, in business? Because truth be told, your name, it, that is the most important currency you got in business. It's the most important currency you got on a personal level. Everybody walk around and they can tell you how much their car is worth, how much their house is worth, how much their 401k this stock portfolio, what those things are valued at. But have you ever took time and looked in the mirror and said to yourself, what is my name valued at? People can run around town all day, every day and talk about the net worth of celebrities. But have you ever asked yourself, what is the net worth of my name? Because your name your reputation, that is the thing that will get you indoors that money can't. Your name, your reputation, that is the thing that will get somebody to answer the phone when they would otherwise send you the voicemail or tell their assistants, tell them I'm not busy or I'm busy right now. Your name will get you meetings with people you only read about. Have you ever done, ever done evaluation of your name? I was talking last week in this company and my first question to them was, who do you work for? And I went around the room individually and I pointed people out. Who do you work for? Who do you work for? Who do you work for? And one after one, they each came back to me saying, the name of the company, the name of the company, the name of the company, the name of the company. And I stopped them. I said, y'all don't get it. You don't get it. I said, the company, that's who pays you. Whoever's name that's on that check, that's your employer, yes. But you work for yourself. You work for you. If you come in here and you're a high earner, you're a high producer, that's your personal brand that's benefiting. If you making the company money and in turn, they bump you up, that's your personal brand that's benefiting. But the opposite can happen. If you're playing average, if you come in every day and you're late, if you're doing just enough not to get fired, that's your personal brand that's taking a hit. You work for you. And I started to tell him about my days at Bad Boy. When I walked in the door, I understood from the gate. Yes, I work for Bad Boy. That's who cut my check. But I work for Prez. Bad Boy is my employer. But I work for me. And long before my name started to ring out, I had to first make a name for myself. 
And I started going hard. And I started putting fear in the competition because they knew you will not outwork Prez. We had a goal. I need to make sure your bosses, if they wasn't firing you, you was getting suspended. But more important than anything, I needed to humiliate everybody because we was number one. Y'all fight for number two. But it was about my name. It was about my personal brand. Long before I ever had any money, I had a good name in the street. Long before I had anything in the bank, I was building a brand which was about me. And I understood that yes, bad boy benefited, but I learned so much in all of the skills that I learned, they're transferable. So when I walked out that door and I started Power Moves Inc., it went right with me. It ain't like my skill set stayed there. It came with me. And because my name was good, we started to get client after client after client because those clients knew these dudes, they don't play around. They gonna go hard whether we looking at them or not. They are gonna treat our money like it's their money. They are gonna treat our brand like it's their brand. But it's all about your name because that's when the money comes. When your name is good. What is your name out here? Can you really look in the mirror and say my name is good? Can you look in the mirror and say my name is worth a certain dollar figure or not. When you hear names like Chris Rock, you think movie star, you think A-level actor, you think Hollywood. When you think names like Kevin Hart, A-level actor, you think Hollywood selling out MSG. You think name like Dave Chappelle, Hollywood, all of those things, Eddie Murphy, all of those things. But long before any of those guys were A-listers, they was the funniest dude in their class. Those was the dudes that was hilarious. They were just great comedians. They did their day job and they did it well. And I got to ask some of y'all, are you doing your day job and doing it well? What do people think when they think you? Because even though those guys, they have all of those accolades behind their name. At the end of the day, they're great comedians. But some of y'all, some of y'all, you ain't got no smut on your name. It ain't no dirt on your name. Nobody can say nothing bad about you. But they can't say nothing good about you either. Because your name don't stand for nothing. Because you're too busy out there trying to do just a little too much. You got so many damn irons in the fire that ain't none of them hot. You sowing so many seeds and planting so many seeds here, there, there, and there. That ain't none of them growing. You ain't got enough water to keep that land moist. Nothing growing. You're doing just too much. You're a jack of all trades and a master at none. Sometimes you got to take a step back. And in order for your name to ring out, in order for you to really have value behind your personal brand, I got to be known for one thing. I got to be that person who is set apart because I am just phenomenal in one area. Before you go and do any of these other things, long before McDonald's was out there selling McNuggets, they were selling Big Macs. They were selling hamburgers. That's what they're known for. Long before Duncan ever sold a cup of coffee, they were selling donuts. That's what they're known for. When you think Taco Bell, what the hell you think? When you think Burger King, when you think Five Guys, they are known for something. What are you known for? 
What are you known for? Because it always comes down to your personal brand. Back in the days, people would say, I got a rep to protect. But first, you got to get a rep. If you want to protect it, stop doing so many things. Take your time. Focus on your craft. Make people know when they see you, they see something, whatever that thing is. He's the best at it. She's the best at it. Because trust me when I tell you, when your name starts ringing out, when your name becomes synonymous with one thing, that's when the checks are going to flow. That's when them doors you've been trying to get in are going to start opening. That's when your phone is going to start ringing. But it come down to your personal brand, your reputation, your name. When I show up on Monday nights, when I'm doing these speaking engagements, yes, people might know me for my past. They might know me for records. They might know me for marketing. But they're bringing me in to be the best speaker and rile up their troops. When I come in, I'm laser focused because I understand that my name is my name. 